by understanding how to design your pages within your application using Bubble's Flexbox Responsive Engine. Let's do it. And now over in my editor, I am currently viewing my page with the new Flexbox Responsive Engine, what's called a modular experience. So when you create a page from scratch and you open up your layout tab, the first thing you'll need to do is identify what's called the container layout of your overall page. So this will determine the way in which your page is structured. And now if I was to open up this menu here, you'll see there's four options. There's the option to leave your container layout fixed. There's the align to parent option, the row option, and the column option. So if you were to select that you want the overall layout of your page to be set as a column, Bubble will position any elements you add on it from top to bottom. Whereas if you set your page layout to be a row, Bubble will position your elements from side to side. I personally prefer to use the column option because when you think about a way that a website is structured, everything on it starts from the top and then is displayed down to the bottom. And I'm just going to show you the difference between the two here. So if I was to select that my container layout should be a column because I want to stack things on my page from top to bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose to add two groups onto my page here. One thing I'm going to do is just update the color of my group here. I'm just going to set this to be a red color. But one thing I just want to do is make a copy of this group and I'm going to update the color of this group to be a purple. And what you'll see is that because my overall page layout here is set to be a column, it just means that these two elements are going to be stacked vertically on top of each other. Whereas if I was to set my container layout to be a row, it's going to stack these horizontally side by side. I would personally recommend stacking this as a column layout, just so that way you can build things from top to bottom. But let's say you've got your overall page set to be a column, and you'd like to display some elements side by side within your actual page itself. Thankfully, it's also possible to update the layout of group elements here. So that way they almost act like mini pages within your overall page. So for our group here, the overall layout itself is set to be a row, but Bubble also provides you the option to update where any elements within this group are aligned. And so you'll see a series of options here where I can choose to align all of my elements to the left, which is the current setting. But between all of your container alignment options here, you'll have the full flexibility to determine where you'd like your elements to sit within your overall group. And one thing I will just mention is that the container alignment option is only provided to groups that are listed as a row. So at this point in time, if I wanted to see how this application looks across different devices, what I could do is head to what's called my responsive tab here. So if I wanted to view what this looks like on a desktop, I could click this and it's going to make the page 1200 pixels wide. And if I wanted to view what this page looks like on the smallest possible mobile device size, I could click on the 320 option. And what you'll see is that some of our buttons here are being cut off on the side. And that's because we'll need to update some of the responsive settings for our elements here. But what I also love is that you can manually just drag this out to see how your application is going to respond across any custom device size. But let's say we want our red group here to expand and retract across the full size of our page, regardless of what device we're currently using. Thankfully, you have the option to update the responsive settings within your editor here. So if you click on the red group, you'll see within your element inspector here, which is this menu, you have the ability to customize the width and the height of this element. And by default, what you'll see is that this element is set to be 400 pixels in width. So that 400 pixels is just the size of our red group across the page. And because this element is currently checked to be what's called fixed width, it just means that it's always going to remain to be 400 pixels at any given time, regardless of what device a user is using. So if a user was to view this page on a desktop, this group is going to remain at 400 pixels. Whereas if they were to view this on a mobile, it's also going to remain at 400 pixels. And so right now this group is not responsive. And in order to make it fully responsive, what we're going to do is we're going to unselect this option to make it a fixed width. 
And what you'll see is by default, it now has a maximum width of infinite, which just means it's going to expand across our page regardless of the size of it. So you can see that it is now fully responsive. The only other thing I will point out though, is that the minimum width of this group is still currently set to 400 pixels. And so that just means that at the 400 pixel mark on our page, it's no longer going to get smaller, which is why you'll see our buttons are still being cut off there. So if I was to set the minimum width here to be zero and the maximum width to be infinite, what you'll find now is that regardless of the overall page size, this group is going to be fully responsive. So if I was to drag my group down, what you'll see is that now it can get as small as it possibly wants and it's going to move the elements inside of it. The other thing I'd like to point out is that if I want this group to fit the height of my buttons that sit within it, by default, Bubble has selected this option here to fit the height of this element to the content within it, which just means that the overall group is going to fit to the height of any elements inside of it, so our buttons here. But by default, it has a minimum height of 250 pixels. And now that's just going to be the distance from the top to bottom within our red group. And so if I was to set the minimum height here to be zero, and if this option is clicked that ensures that the group is only going to be as high as the elements within it, it's now going to create a perfect responsive experience for the height of our overall group. So now you'll see that not only is the width fully responsive, regardless of the user's device size, but the group that the element sits within is also going to adapt to the elements inside of it. And now one other thing I'd like to show you is how you can leverage margins within your application. So margins essentially just allow you to add spacing within your app. So at the moment you can see this red group sits at the very top of my page, which might work well if we wanted it to be a navigation menu. But let's say we wanna push that down on our page. The way we can do that is by using margins. So within our layout tab here, if we scroll on down, you'll see the option here to add in margin around this particular element that we've selected. And what I can do is I can choose to add in how many pixels of margin I'd like at the top, the bottom, the left, or on the right. So let's say I wanted to add in 30 pixels of margin at the top. What you'll now see is that this group no longer touches the top of my page. If I wanted, I could also add 30 pixels of margin at the bottom, and then 30 pixels on the left and 30 pixels on the right. And now what you'll see is that regardless of my page size, this group is never going to touch the borders of the page itself, just because it has a nice margin positioned around it. And as I mentioned, if you were to take away anything from this second part of this module, it's that when you're building an application and you want to make the elements on it fully responsive, I'd recommend putting them within a group element so it acts as almost like a container or a house for all of your elements. It'll not only give you full control over where you position those elements within the group using the container alignment option, but by setting the minimum width of a group to be zero and the maximum width to be infinite, it allows this group to be fully responsive across any device of your choosing. And the same applies for the height of this group.